This is effective technical communication and we are discussing the chapter Dynamics of Communication. Our today's topic in this chapter is Intercultural Communication. Now, what is the importance of intercultural communication? So, as we all know that our today's world is a world of communication. There is a lot and lots of communication which is happening in today's world. And particularly, we have also talked about a lot of communication happening on the internet through the social media. So, because of this social media, we are able to communicate globally. Not only that, but because the markets have opened over the borders, the businesses also happen globally. So for us to learn communication in the organization, it is also very important to learn intercultural communication, particularly for people who, who work in an environment where they have clients from outside of the country or they may also have some offices which may be outside of the country. They may have some branches in the other countries. So for our business purposes, we may have to interact with people outside the country. And for that purpose, we need to learn the culture of that country. As the businesses these days happen across borders, People in organizations, they, they are into such situations where they have to communicate with other people from different countries. Now, when we talk about different countries, then definitely we understand one thing and that is different culture. Now, first of all, what is the meaning of culture? So, as we may think that culture will bring in our minds Things like, you know, uh, things which are related to, first of all, the language, then maybe the way people dress up, then there are festivals, then there are art, uh, different things, uh, which, you know, prominently show the difference in the culture. The culture difference does not limit only to this. Culture difference has many, many deeper aspects. For example, the way people talk it is also guided by culture or you may say the way people deal with others or the way people uh, like uh, things like respecting the elders or things like how do we behave with the neighbors or things like uh, maybe you know uh, how much how much strong there is a feeling of community or how much of the individualism is there all these are also the factors of a culture because ultimately culture means the way of living as the way of living differs the way of communication also differs because communication depends a lot on the culture the way the people live it guides the way a person communicates so what is the meaning of intercultural communication so intercultural communication can be defined as interaction between members of different groups. Now why they are different? They differ from each other just because of the knowledge they share with each other. The kind of information they share with each other. And they become a different group and a different group has a different culture. When we talk about cultural variations, uh, these cultural variations are not only of language, but they are also many, many different things. The way people communicate also differs. It is not only about the language. For example, uh, when we say that, you know, if a person has to go to Germany, the person will have to learn German. True, because the, that particular language you have to learn, the lo local language you have to learn where you have to work. Because to communicate the language is required but what we miss out over here is that apart from language there are so many different factors which affects when we have to communicate with other culture people it is very important to understand that uh, why this cultural variations affect the communication it affects the communication because the intended message or the intended meaning of a message differs 
when it is encoded by a person from a certain culture and then it is decoded by some other person from other culture why because the way they relate to words and the way they relate to the non verbal cues or the symbols are different for different culture in india we believe in community living so we believe in closed groups we always are in closed groups to take an example of countries like usa or any other uh, countries you know where individualism is given more importance as, as compared to community then the way of communicating differs let me give you an example uh we we stay in a closed group and uh, we give importance and we have very good relations with our neighbors so we have a particular way of talking with people sometimes we also you know uh, talk in such a manner that we feel that you know we have obligation with each other to fulfill each other's needs but in the usa they don't think that way they don't feel that they have obligation to fulfill each other's needs so that is why they say a lot of thank you to each other they always feel that if some other person does something from for them it is something which is extra and they always say thank you and in our culture if if a friend tells us thank you then we will say that oh uh, we have a we have a very famous quote that no sorry and no thank you in friendship but in in the other cultures that is not the case so again suppose you are talking to someone who is not from india and you you don't tend to thank them uh, quite often then people will start feeling very strange about you they will build a perception about you and they will not understand if they don't understand our culture so it is very important they should understand that this is our culture and that is why we behave in a certain manner and because of that behavior we also communicate in a certain manner so we don't feel the need of telling thank you all the time and we don't feel the need of telling thank you to everyone we may say thank you to maybe some strangers or uh, in the organizations to our colleagues or someone but in the families and with the relatives or sometimes even with the neighbors we may not say a thank you uh, so this is one a very strikingly opposite thing of two different cultures again gestures have different meanings in different cultures so in different cultures there are some different ways of gestures for example uh, in india uh, we have a particular you know body movement or uh, we can also call it as a gesture where we may do like this we, we may just turn our head like this you know when 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 we when when, when we want to show uh some kind of obedience or when we agree we just tilt it a little on a side but that gesture is not used in some countries like the usa they don't use this gesture and they find it very very modest gesture they feel that this is a very new gesture a different gesture they either say a yes or a no so again there is a lot of difference and sometimes they may not even understand that particular gesture sometimes we only nod it like this that means we are just giving our agreement and they may think that you know we are not sure about it because we are just tilting our head so again there is a difference of the gesture over here so um, there are so many intercultural variations now if if we talk about uh, if we talk about people coming from different places within the country uh, again there is a lot of cultural variation uh, you may have observed you know that uh, many people from other states they they migrate over here and they stay in uh, in, in the state and their way of communication is completely different because their way of thinking is completely different they are uh, they they have been they have grown up in completely different environment they talk in a certain manner to a certain person and they talk in a certain different manner as compared to you so even within the country you will find a lot of cultural variations okay now again let us come to a very micro level of cultural variation you may live in the same state for example you stay in gujarat so you may live in the same state 
but even different cities have different culture so let me give you an example you may say that you know uh, people uh, people in ahmedabad believe a lot of uh, it, people in ahmedabad believe in having a lot of fun they they believe in in earning a lot of money and then spending it during their weekends so that is the culture of ahmedabad that may not be the culture of some other city uh, for example baroda or some other city then we may say that people of surat they have a uh, there there is a culture of eating a lot eating outside they are really fond of eating so again there is a different culture so culture even there is a uh, because of culture there is a different variation and then uh, when we come to the language part then uh, that is very obvious that where, uh, wherever you go you have to learn the language of that place but again if i talk about just the gujarat state then you must have observed that within this only this state that within this one state there are different dialects people speak in a different manner so all all of them may be speaking gujarati but again their way of speaking is different and sometimes you will not even understand certain words spoken by a person from a different city so this is how the culture becomes different and the communication between them are different so that is why the intercultural communication is very very important and in the present time when the businesses are have we need to consider the different cities and the states and everything but at the same time now because it the entire world has become very very close and the businesses may happen across the borders you will also have to learn various things about their culture so starting from the language the accent you also have to understand the accent of the other person because again um, for one particular language there may be different accents the australian accent of english language is different from that of britain and from that of the us so all the three of them have different accents they use so we have to get you know um, we also have to learn to understand those accents so uh, you also have to learn the accents but at the same time you also have to learn the culture that how they live and what meaning you know they 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 infer from whatever you say or what kind of gestures you should not do with people with certain countries because in some countries certain gestures are um, are counted as positive while in other countries the same gesture is counted as a negative gesture so you also have to be aware about all these things so intercultural communication is very very important so to have to, uh, so this is all about the dynamics of communication and here we are ending the first chapter of dynamics of communication i would like to revise whatever we have studied till now so we started with the definition of communication then we talked about the communication process how the communication process happens we understood that what is the importance of communication in our lives and in the organization or in the professional life then we talked about the different levels of communication then we talked about the barriers to communication we also talked about the interpersonal communication and then today we talked about the intercultural communication so till now we have learned the basics of communication and we have understood that what all things are important as far as communication is 